All right, we've got another bonus show for you guys right now. There's more content than, than we can possibly fit into the normal content schedule. A lot of stuff to talk about this week as the number two Buckeyes head west, face the number three Oregon Ducks. Apologize in advance if you hear a lot of background noise. We're at the Phoenix airport. It is not the quietest place in the world, so I have plenty of, uh, plenty of background noise for you. Just consider it fun ambiance and uh, a chance to capture the mood of our trip out west. So, Today you're going to be hearing from the Buckeyes. We had a chance to talk to them Wednesday night just before we left. We're going to start with Ohio State coach, head coach Ryan Day. He was asked about the challenge of facing a lefty quarterback like Dylan Gabriel and whether they were using their lefty quarterback, Air Nolan, to sort of give them a look at that during practice this week. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, the ball comes out, so I, I, I think it's probably more – um, you know, catching a lefty or getting a snap, you know, when a lefty quarterback. But yeah, he's been over there and, and doing a great job. And, um, you know, he, he's got a great arm and he's also really athletic. So that, that part's good. And he, um, but, you know, um, so yeah, he's, he's been over there getting work and, and doing a good job for us. This is not exactly the first big game the Ohio State football team has been a part of. They play Michigan every year, they play Penn State every year, they play top five out of conference opponents from time to time that played in a bunch of college football playoff games. You get the picture. You know, this is not a new thing for the Buckeyes, but still, this is going to be a very big test. Number two versus number three, a cross country trip, one of the toughest road venues in all of college football. How do you get ready for this type of a game? Uh, what we see every day in practice. And, and like you said, it is a big challenge. It's a big challenge for all of us, which um, is great. You know, we've been looking forward to it and uh, preparation uh, has been, has been good and, so we'll keep working at it, but uh, but yeah, you know, biggest challenge to date, and um, you know, that's that's what these guys have been working towards. One thing that might help the Buckeyes this weekend is they're going to get Carnell Tate back in the passing game. Really dynamic receiver who kind of gets lost behind Jeremiah Smith and Emeka Abuka sometimes in the narrative around the team. But just listen to Ryan Day talk about what he brings, and you know he is an important part to get back this weekend. Well, Carnell um, is certainly very very talented, um, but. To me, again, you know, he's he's very intelligent. He works really hard. He's a really good blocker when the ball's not in his hands. He does a great job, but he's a very good route runner, uh, good downfield, good underneath. Right after catch has been excellent. So, you know, first off, it's the production. Um, second thing, it's it's you know his his leadership. He's a leader, even for a young player, and um, so it's great to have him back. Well, Carnell Tate was at last week. He was his spot was ably filled in for. Him. By Brandon Innes. He made a big catch on fourth down. What does it do for a young guy like Brandon Innes, who's still kind of working to establish himself, to have a catch like that? Yeah, it's confidence. And you know, how do you build confidence? You do it. And every day is an opportunity to build confidence in the coaches and your teammates and then in yourself. And I think when you make a play like that in a conference game, it does all three of those things. So um, you know, great to see him make that play. But when, when you see him do it in practice every day, um, you know, no one was surprised when he made that catch. And um, you know, he's very, very competitive and tough, and so um, you know, it's good to have him in there, good to have another guy that we can count on. Game week has a certain rhythm around the Ohio State program. They'll practice a bunch during the week, but the big practices, the really hard practices, that's Tuesday, and then to a slightly lesser extent, Wednesday. So how did those two practices go this week? Because how those practices go is often a sign of how well the game's going to go on Saturday. Yeah, good. Good, good spirited. Um, you know, guys, um, you know, it's about us. We always say that. So even, you know, when, you know, we're playing, um, you know, an excellent opponent like we're playing, you know, it's still about us. We want to know our opponent as well. But uh, it's about the standard we set. And um, we've had good, you know, two good days right here. And, and guys have been, guys have been edgy, which is what you want. And coaches have been edgy. And so that, that's good. Uh, we're going to get back on the film here and figure out what corrections we need to make and where we need to enhance the things we did well. And, uh, and keep grinding and keep preparing um, as, as you know, we head into Saturday. There are a million storylines for this weekend's game. One of them is how the Ohio State offensive line is going to hold up against the Oregon defensive ends. Especially, let's talk about right tackle Josh Fryer. It's going to be a very big game for him and a big challenge for him. So, so how is Ryan Day seeing Josh Fryer and the rest of the offensive line improve this season? Oh, well, yeah, it, it's, it's something that we all knew going into this, this offseason needed to get done. Um, and you know, and, and, and you're seeing some improvements for sure. And um, and it, but it's you know it's all of us. You know we're all continually working to get better. And, and so as we know, we got a big challenge this week. And um, but we're seeing him improve uh, again because he's practicing well. And so I know I sound like a broken record, but it's just true. You know I mean how you practice every day is is how you're going to get better. It's just the way that football works. 
and and he's doing that. Um, and, and he gets to go against Jack and JT every day as a barometer to see where he's at. So um, we'll need him to play well this this game. Talked earlier about some of the young receivers getting a chance to maybe make a make a play, make a make an impact on the game. One of the guys who did that last week was Bryson Rogers. He had a big catch on a crucial early third down play against Iowa. What does that mean in terms of his continued development? Yeah, I thought the catch, the first down catch early in the game, to, to make a play like that contested early in a game is, is a good sign. Yeah, because, um, you know, usually the progression for a young player is they make a catch, you know, later in the game when they're comfortable or, you know, when they're open. Uh, that was a contested te- contested catch early in a game on a third down that, you know, we needed to, to keep the drive going. So uh, that was encouraging. And I think, again, building confidence and, you know, will to throw him the ball but also uh, builds confidence in the coaches to know we can put him in the game and builds confidence in himself. Now you're going to get to hear from Josh Fryer himself. He's asked about the loud environment. He's one of the few Buckeyes who have seen a game inside Autzen Stadium and the importance of being able to use that silent count this weekend. Uh, it'll be important. Um, I mean, Autzen's, I've been there before on my official visit uh, to big stadium. Um, it only holds 54,000, but I, I can bet in my gut that it'll get pretty loud. So, uh, yeah, silent count's going to be uh, helpful during that game. Friar's going to be in store for a big test. He may get pulled on to block Jordan Birch, big defensive end for Oregon. Massive, very athletic, and two and a half sacks last weekend against Michigan State. What kind of a challenge does that present? He's a really good player, uh, powerful, super strong. Um, when he's 6'6", 290, and he moves like that, it's, it's kind of scary. But at the same time, um, I think for us as offense line, we got to do our job. Both tackles do their job. Um, and I don't know, I think, I think it'll be a good game. The Ohio State offense has made big strides in terms of their ability to run the ball, which has in turn helped them out in terms of converting third downs, staying on the field, scoring touchdowns being efficient in the red zone, all of those things. And it all stems from running the ball better than they did last year. So why is the offensive offense able to run the ball so much better this year? Experience. I'd say that. I'd say experience. Uh, My second year, Josh's second year playing at Ohio State, Donovan's third year, um, Tegra. But I think Tegra, Seth's uh, experience too. um, But Tegra has that, um, I don't know, he leans on me and Seth, but at the same time, um, you see some things when Tiger goes on a tape, you're like, oh, my gosh, like that guy's pretty good. Um, yeah, I think just the, the experience of us uh, up front and um, like I said in pass pro, it'll be a good test. It'll be a good test when we go against this really good defense. And one more from Josh Fryer. This is a big stage. And again, we've said this on a bunch of shows. This is not a brand new thing for the Buckeyes to play in a big game, but this is still top three matchup, national TV. What is it like to play on that kind of a big stage? Yeah, it's a test for us. Um, uh, I'm not a big, uh, I don't like it on national television because you just get, if you get messed up, everybody knows. Um, The reporters, the announcers, everybody. Uh, But at the same time, you got to embrace it too. Um, I think last year, Personally, when it was a big game, I would kind of shy away from it. But now I feel more experienced and um, just ready to play the game. And it's a cool environment because you don't you never get to experience anything like this ever again in your life. So and finally, we always call him the most honest man on the Ohio State football team. Cornerback Denzel Burke, he will tell you what he thinks. There was a little bit of subtext this this week where he was trying very hard to not say stuff. You got the sense that you could maybe pick up the vibes of what he was thinking at times. Here's one. He was asked about going up against the Oregon wide receivers and the challenge that would present. Oh, yeah. There, it's it's going to be a great matchup, man. Um, this is something I always wish for. You know, I go against the best receivers every day in practice. But uh, to be able to go against good on good, man, it's really exciting for me. You know, I'm a really big competitor. So it's going to be really fun. They got a good group of guys over there. And let's, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Burke was one of the few players who was on this year's team who was also playing on that 2021 Ohio State team. He was actually a starter very early in his Ohio State career. What happened in that game and what happens? What's different now? 
I mean, we couldn't stop the run that game uh, three years ago. And um, I feel like we're a lot, we're a different team from then. And, um, you know, they play fast. They play at a really good tempo. So it's just really just, you know, getting, making sure we're getting our calls, lining up and, you know, playing with our best effort. One of the many interesting storylines about this week's game is the Buckeyes going up against a lefty quarterback in Oregon's Dylan Gabriel. It is not something they have faced a whole heck of a lot of over the last few years. So does that make this a more challenging game in some way? It's going to be my first time actually playing a lefty, so it might be a little different feel. Um, you know, he's a good quarterback, pretty accurate, um, good throws, and uh, we were just really ready to challenge him. And, you know, we're going to be the first good, good, great uh, set of DBs that he's going to see. So really excited for this matchup Saturday. Being a lefty, of course, not the only thing that's a little unusual about Dylan Gabriel. He is a six-year player at his third school. Could set the NCAA all-time passing record this year, depending on how long the Ducks play and how well Dylan Gabriel plays. What kind of challenge does he present? Oh, yeah, he's he's good with his feet. He can extend plays. Um, he's good rolling out to his left. Um, so we're really just we're just happy. We're happy to see what we're, what we're going to see on Saturday. Um, he's a good player, and uh, he's a leader. You know, I'm pretty sure he's a six-year, right? So he's, he's experienced. Uh, he's a vet. So it's going to be a great challenge for us. And finally, this is number two in the nation versus number three in the nation. The winner could end up number one in the nation. Does a game this big feel any different? Yeah, man, you, you shake a little more, um, especially in the big time games. But those are the moments I'm built for. And those are the moments I'm really ready for. And um, I've been playing in big games my entire life. And uh, really just go out there and play football, man, and do what we got to do. And, you know, be the best version of myself Saturday night. We will have much more coverage for you coming up today and all weekend long as we get into Portland on Thursday evening. We're hoping to do a live show from our hotel in Portland if we get there at a reasonable hour of that coverage. And we'll be down to Eugene on Friday for what should be a full day of coverage, including the Buckeyes team arrival out there and much more. That's going to be all at BuckeyeHuddle.com and YouTube.com slash BuckeyeHuddle. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you hit that bell. Make sure you're subscribed to BuckeyeHuddle.com as well. We have great content there. Tony, Kevin, and I covering the team. Mark covering recruiting. Our whole team vexes his nose gurus there to make you a smarter football fan. All at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We hope to see you there. That'll do it for now. We'll be back with more content a little later on.